Hmm. I'm gonna guess it's not a good thing if I can hear the wheel bearings of the trailer while I'm towing it. And yes, I'm towing it with a Geo Metro. But uh, yeah, it's about time to service them bearings. Never mind the fact I've owned the trailer for like 12 years now and never done the wheel bearings in it. That might sound terrible, but I've only used the trailer like three times. Well, four by eight trailers are kind of useless when I'm normally hauling, you know, a 16 or 18 foot car trailer, so. But now I got the Geo set up with a little trailer hitch. Now I can finally use that little trailer. That's bad. Yeah, we're gonna give that some loving. There's a little rust on there. Rut row. And that's a little toasty. Mmm, nothing like stress cracks. That's how you know it's good. Well, hey, at least it's got marine grease in it. Why, I don't know. Although one time I did use this to launch my boat. I have to get a new cutter key because that one just busted off. And I bet that wheel bearing's completely loose. Yep. I mean, they actually still got plenty of grease on them, but they were just super duper loose. nice so the back bearing and the seal stayed right where they were well, at least I can reuse the seal I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that bearing though looks like whoever was in this last just packed grease in from the front kind of like you would get on those uh, greasable hubs which is kind of dumb considering this has grease circs on it. Bearing doesn't want to come off. Oh, that's, that's bad. Ah, crap, I'm gonna have to get bearings. It's not supposed to do that. That's almost bad enough the bearings can fall out. Well, this just went from a 15 minute bearing repack to a parts store run. I gotta cut the old bearing off because she seized on the spindle. Split the cage open. We'll drop the rollers out.
probably gonna have to cut that off too. Well, I guess this is a good opportunity to show you guys how I cut a race off. Now you can definitely heat it up, which <clears throat> some people do, that's fine. What I'm gonna do is take the die grinder and make a slice in this thing. Not all the way down to the spindle, but just get it down to a good thin amount. And then we'll take a cold chisel and pop it apart. She'll slide right off of there. See how it immediately spun? That's all the cutting you really got to do. And that's enough to loosen it up. Now it spins pretty freely. Sometimes you got to do it on both sides and, and whale it and it'll crack open. But I think we can get it from there. Maybe. Maybe. I said maybe. Try and move. I'm trying my best not to wreck this seal since it's stuck back there. Hopefully, I can get the part numbers off of it. At the same time, we're trying not to hit the spindle itself with the cold chisel. Definitely moving though. There she goes. Well, it started going. This what trailer wasn't, you know, a foot off of the ground, make it a lot easier. But sometimes it's the way she goes. Yeah, finally off of there. And you can see where the rollers were stopping and it's pitted from the water penetration. So it's gonna need a new seal anyway. Now a smart man would take apart the other side and see how bad it is, see if we can salvage some bearings. But the fact that I'm gonna be towing this thing pretty regularly behind the geo, I'm just gonna go get two sets of bearings. To knock your races out, Take your hub, set it right back inside the wheel, long punch with a flat shoulder on it, and get just on the inside of the race. Walk it back and forth. You can see it walked all the way out to the face. Once it's at that point, it's pretty loose and you can knock it out. You don't have the bolt pattern to your advantage on the other side, but Of course, this one's got a grease fitting, so it's not going to sit very nice. So I'm just going to drive it on the ground. Probably a better idea to use a board, but do what you do. When you see it rebound up, you know it's at the end of the travel it's going to get. Make sure you drop everything in the grease. That's always good. Now we got our races out, we'll clean the hub up, we'll get some bearings in there. Got our hub all cleaned up, got all the old grease out of there. I'm going to do a preventative strike right now and replace this old grease fitting because it ain't been used in years, not by me at least. 
Well, at least I can see through it. <coughs> Don't over tighten grease fittings. A lot of people do. Sometimes you gotta grab a different grease fitting so that when you tighten it down, it faces the right direction. Because sometimes it'll be facing, you know, over here. And you'll go to crank it down, and you'll snap that thing off. If that's the case, and, and it's starting to get, you know, way too tight as you're cranking on it, but you can't get it in position, just go grab another fitting. They all start the threads in a different spot. You'll find one that clocks it right. So I got one of my old races here. <clears throat> my uh, bearing and race driver set. I don't have one small enough for this bearing. So I'm going to take the die grinder. And fillet that guy in half it's going to relieve the tension and then we can use this to drive in the new races we got our new bearings and races here we're going to drive our races in place usually you can get them to start just with your hand get them going square so you can throw a board over top feel it bottom out now we'll take that race that we split open and we're gonna stack it right on top of the old one. Once it gets traveling down, the old race will stay right on top of it and you can drive it right down in place. See under your turn. Now it's bottomed out, and because we stacked these, the old race has its shoulder right here. So now we can take our punch, put it on top of that shoulder, and because we split it, it's real loose, she slides right out. Now that new race is bottomed out. We didn't damage anything running it in that way. We'll do the other one real quick. Watch your fingies. Well, these braces fit nice and tight. Sometimes you run across them and they damn near fall in. You can usually reach in there with your fingernail, make sure your bottom race is all the way in. Take our punch again. On the back side of that old race. There we go. Two races ready to go. Now we'll pack the bearing. Handy dandy Lyle wheel bearing packing tool. And when you set this in place, the cone is going to grab a hold of the cage. So you're going to set it cone side down, drop it in, take the plunger, work it around in a circle. Now you can see the grease coming up through each one of the rollers, whereas the brand new one, you see there's no grease. It's coming up in between each one of those rollers. Once it's through the rollers, the bearing is packed. Then I'll grab a finger full and just get the outside of the rollers coated. That's ready to go in the hub. Now we'll put our seal on top of the back side of the bearing. Be gentle when you're starting it. If it goes in crooked, bad things can happen. Bottom out the seal. Make sure that we're butted up tight. That hub's ready to go on. I always like to take a little bit of grease, at least on a grease bearing, coat where the seal rides, and give the seal a little whiff of grease too, help it slide together. Now, if this hub didn't have the grease zerk on the back, I would normally pack the inner um, cavity with grease as well. Normally just stick the hose of the grease gun in there and give it a couple pumps, spin it a couple times, get the grease seated up on everything. But because it has that, I can just start assembly and we can fill it afterward. 
put in our front bearing and the washer. Axle nut. Tighten a little bit, spin it. Tighten a little bit, spin it. Keep working that grease into the roller, make sure everything's nice and smooth. Totally fine to feel a lot of resistance when you first tighten it and go to spin it. A lot of resistance right there, then the grease comes up, gets on the race, and then it spins a lot easier. Now make sure those bearings are fully seated. And then back it off quarter turn. I'm tighten a little bit just so I line up my cotter pin. Right about there. That hub feels good. Drop a cotter pin. Then the long leg out. Short leg in. Dust cap. And then we'll treat that with a brand new Carlisle on a fresh powder coated wheel direct from Harbor Freight. Man, their stickers are tough. run them down with the impact, then we'll set the trailer down and torque them. So nice and smooth, good little bit of resistance right now. After a couple miles down the road, it'll be real good to go. And before I get too far ahead of myself, it's nice when you can spin the tire because you can actually find your grease spinning to fill up that cavity. Now, if you're being real particular about this, leave your dust cap off and then start greasing. And when you see the grease start coming past the bearing, you know you've filled up the capacity. I know it takes about 75 pumps because I've already done the other side. People wonder, well, what's the meaning of life? Like, what's it all about? What's, what justifies the suffering and the misery and all of that? It's like, well, that's what justifies it. It's like you put yourself up against that. You think, okay, all, with all of this pushing against me, how much can I push back? Could I move the horror an inch back with, with all the strength that I have at my disposal? Man, and the answer to that is, yeah, you can. It, 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 it makes you better with regards to yourself, but it also makes the world a better place. People wonder, well, what's the meaning of life? And now all that's left is tidy up, clean up all my tools, and I'm gonna go get a sheet of plywood so I can deck this thing, put it in service. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something out of that.